the eve of the election is upon us, and I have been, people have been asking me all throughout the election cycle this time what my views are, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and I have been trying and trying. I have my views, but I cannot work up the energy to express them. Because trying to trying to choose between the left and the right at this point in this country is like trying to choose between the monkey that's throwing hard stool and the monkey that's throwing liquid stool. I it, it is so completely absurd. On the one hand, you have on, on the left you have uh, Antifa and BLM. On the right, you have uh, QAnon and the Proud Boys and all of this bullshit. And I am so sick of acting like we have to oscillate back and forth between two increasingly extreme extremes. This is, this is absolutely ridiculous. The level of absurdity that that is so willingly and ridiculously imbibed by this country at large absolutely beggars belief. I am not going to vote for Donald Trump because a vo uh, for, for a very simple reason. It, it, it really comes down to this. I want a candidate that's not going to get on my nerves. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris don't get on my nerves. I can deal with turning on the news and seeing their faces and hearing their voices and not being annoyed. No, that does not mean that they are exemplary, perfect people. No, that does not mean that I'm going to agree with them on everything. No, that does not mean that they even represent a great deal of what I believe in. But I can turn on the news and see their faces and hear their voices, and it won't get under my skin. With Donald Trump, if I'm being totally honest, I hate his asshole face. I hate his asshole voice. I want him gone. That's it. That's all there is. And there is no... The, and, and you're going to come in with 10 gajillion paragraphs in the comments section of endless crap about, uh, you know, something about this about Hunter Biden or this do wonderful thing Donald Trump. I, I will give Donald Trump credit for one thing. He, uh, he did abolish uh, the teaching of critical race theory, which I think is having a, CRT I think is having a very backwards effect on um, uh, race relations in this country, uh, and it's going to undo the progress that we have made, uh, if it hasn't completely already. So, that's one thing, but that's one drop in a very, 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 very large bucket. So, uh, that's literally all it comes down to. That's literally all I care about. Donald Trump, I hate his asshole face, I hate his asshole voice. And if I sound weary and fatigued about this, it's because I literally am. I have lived through Reagan, Bush 1, Clinton, Bush 2, and Obama, and in all five, and now Trump, and in all of those first five cases, you could go for weeks, sometimes even a couple of months, without needing to think about the president or contemplate what the president said or did or give it any thought. It, it, even even W, with all of his, uh, you know, airheaded, hayseed antics, could put a space of a few weeks to a couple months between each thing. It wasn't like he got the shoe thrown at him one day at a press conference, and then the very next day he couldn't open the door at the next press conference. There, there was space between his ridiculous antics. Donald Trump has been the number one news story every single day that he has been in the White House. No president 
should be in the white should be in uh, should be the number one story this often. But every single day he has been the number one story, even as we are dealing with um, uh, even as we are dealing with uh, the COVID pandemic, Trump has still managed to make himself the number one news story. And that is, that's not good. And I know the people that defend Trump are going to say, oh, well, that's just because the left-wing media has been attacking him every day. No, the simple reality, again, I watched the same left-wing media make it through um, entire news cycles without needing to go into the president or, or without needing to hyper-analyze everything the president was doing. This is different. Trump is a toxic narcissist, and I'm sorry if you can't see that, but he's got to go. My friend Beckloff asked me uh, privately, and I got his permission to reiterate this, asked me if maybe my disdain for Trump is a misplaced uh, hatred for the manosphere. No, it's an accurately placed hatred for the manosphere. Donald Trump is the manosphere's uh, candidate of choice, and it's very easy to see why. He's a loud, boorish, crude, uh, kick sand in your face while you're trying to make a sandcastle asshole. And that is exactly what the Manosphere worships on an almost deific level. And Trump knows that those people with those values are his core base. Who, did, who was the extremist group he gave a shout-out to at the debates? The Proud Boys. And, you know, it's so, and, and again, it's so amazing, you know that he cannot denounce white nationalists. And I know you're going to defend him and say, oh, well, he said, he said, what do you want me to say? He was trying to, you know, he was trying to say something that they would uh, agree with or accept. No, you don't need, you, you do not, that is deflecting the issue. It's not difficult. Watch, I'll do it right now. Uh, white nationalists are a blight on this country. I uh, do not agree with their views. I actively reject them. I do not need their votes, and the country does not need them. Wow. That was, um, uh, that was right off the bat, and I think it would have been totally fine. And that's what I would, you know, that's the kind of thing I would say the first time it, uh, the subject of white nationalists came up. It would not be, you know, after four years of ditzing around the question. But uh, at the end of the day, there's really nothing, I don't think I can say at this point, that's going to change people's perspective. This has gotten, uh, you know, I, I am uh, completely disgusted by this boorish, disgusting insult to the human race. And uh, I, I, want, I want it over. I want an end to it. I don't, you know, to me, telling me that I should put up with Donald Trump his, his personality because of all the good he's doing for the country is like telling someone, oh, you sh you, yeah, your boyfriend is abusive and he beats you and gaslights you and all that, but he's so much fun at parties and we don't want you to break up with him because then we won't be able to bring him around. It's like, it's something like that. It's like you're telling, you're telling people to put up with an abusive relationship. And the thing is, you know, I am very well aware of how the left wing in this country has gone way off the deep end with all of the way that they lie and smear people. The problem is I know that the right does it too. And the, uh, the right wing gaslights people who uh, disagree with Donald Trump, saying we have Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, again, this is not, the, the reaction that people are having is the reaction of people that know that Donald Trump is a heinous insult to human decency and are actively scared that there are large swaths of the country that apparently don't see that. He is the sort of person that should be <clears throat> obviously and automatically uh, a, a turnoff to decent human beings. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that support Trump and support him for, uh, you know, they, I should say they, they support Trump and they are wonderful, amazing people. And I'm not denouncing them at all. I think they're awesome. And I think, I don't think that anybody 
votes with the intention of uh, fucking up the country or seeing how bad they can make things. They're, everybody votes hoping they can make it better. So, at the end of the day, I just cannot abide voting for Donald Trump. My, or having Donald Trump in the White House, my opinion is that every, every extremist group eventually gets to have their version of stupid in the White House. You know, George W. Bush was the creation science pro-life version of stupid. Donald Trump has been the uh, Pizzagate, QAnon, Alex Jones version of stupid. And it do, and that's the thing is though it's not lost on me that there's going to come a time where we're going to have the Robin D'Angelo, Ibram X. Kendi version of stupid in the White House, and that's going to be horrifying and detrimental. And uh, I know that that will happen, and I know I know that that will come one day, and that that's brewing in the wings. I don't think it's going to happen with um, Joe Biden and um, with Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. If it was Stacey Abrams, I'd be a little bit more worried. But uh, I, I, I don't think Joe and Kamala are going to be a problem. The other thing, we, one thing we can do to diffuse the leftist insanity on that side of the debate is to uh, take one on the chin and give them this last token figure that they want, because the left... The left runs on one, one has one big premise that they like to push, and that's the first blank to blank. So the first, uh, you know, the, the uh, Kamala Harris goes into the office, she will be the first African-American woman to uh, be the vice president and possibly the president. And if we can, um, if we can have that, have Kamala uh, be the first black woman to be president, uh, that will tick off most of the boxes. Uh, ideally, if we could have a, um, if we could find a, if we could find a, a candidate that was a black wheelchair-bound Muslim lesbian, then we could uh, really tick off all of the boxes, and the left would really not have anything transgender Muslim lesbian. Then the left would really not have anything left. We just get that candidate in there, give them four years, and finally the left can no longer play their first blank to blank card, and they have to get back to actual focusing on actual policy issues. Because, you know, I'm not going to lie, I do think that Obama, uh, Barack Obama, was important in the development of this country. It was important that we finally have our first black president. I, I, am in the, I am liberal enough to say I think that was culturally important. But it cheapens that significance when we uh, then start going around, okay, what's the next blank to blank? And um, if we can, you know, once the left finally has their black wheelchair-bound transgender uh, Muslim lesbian in the, in the White House, they will have to go back to, uh, con to, to focusing on actual issues. Uh, I, I have no idea what tomorrow holds. I really, uh, I really cannot, could not tell you. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, you know, more and more, the older I get with a lot of these issues, my attitude is just, it's kind of like my attitude about climate change. You might have noticed I've never taken a public position on climate change. And the reason is real simple. Because if I take this uh, position, these people yell at me. And if I take this position, these people yell at me. You know, Facebook is just, Facebook and Twitter have just evolved into these places we go to get yelled at by people. I mean, that's that's all it is. It's just shouting, in, you know, um, typographically shouting in your faces. And so, I, you know, when it comes to something like climate change, my answer is, I hope it works out for the best. I hope the smart people who are in charge, who should be in charge, are able to work everything out for the best. And more and more, that's how I feel about a lot of issues. I hope it works out for the best.